Hang on, this should do the job. Hi and welcome to Last Watch. November is a very special month in the Last Watch household. Not only does it see my birthday, but also my wife's birthday, and of course, I shouldn't forget the little matter of our wedding anniversary. It will also mark two years since I was bitten by the watchbook and spiralled into addiction. It was never my intention to start collecting watches. My wife had asked me what I would like for my birthday, and when I suggested a watch, she gave me that look that said, Really? It's not that I didn't like watches, it's just the fact that in the whole 30 years we've known each other, I've never worn one. In actual fact, I already had a watch, an Acuris that was gifted to me many years ago by my best friend, which I spent most of the last 10 years in a drawer. The watch did appear in a few early watch repair videos, which I have since taken off the channel. My reluctance to wear a watch comes from my work and lifestyle. My job can be pretty hardcore, and when I'm not working, I spend a lot of time doing martial arts. ITF Taekwondo to be precise. For a long time I didn't like to wear any adornments in the fear that they'd get lost or broken. After I got married I figured if I was wearing a wedding ring then I may as well wear a watch. My wife knowing nothing about watches asked me to pick one out and me being me I spent about a month looking at options. This pricked my interest and things have snowballed from there. I have mentioned some of this in previous videos but generally I'm very candid about what I tell you guys. Ultimately, you're here for the watches and not to be bored by stories about me. So this brings us to today's video. I thought I'd bring you up to speed on my relatively humble collection. Nothing you're about to see will stretch your purse strings beyond a few hundred quid. Sorry, that's British pains to those of you watching from outside of the UK. If you're hoping to see something high-end or luxury level, then I suggest you stop watching now. Oh good, you're still here. Let's get started then. This is the watch that started the madness, the Citizen Promaster BN0150-28E. Like the majority of Citizen watches, it's an EcoDrive Quartz, which basically means it has a solar cell to charge its battery. I won't go into great detail of each watch that you'll see today, but I'll post links to their full reviews up here. If you see a watch you like, then just click their link to learn more. The Promaster has pretty much been my work beater and has had more than its fair share of wrist time, only recently being usurped by something completely different. You'll see that watch fairly soon. This is a 42mm fully spec dive watch and it doesn't miss a beat. I'd be surprised if it slipped a second a month. Needless to say, it's a perfect grab and go watch. It was bought for £160 on a fairly decent though quite squeaky rubber strap. Be sure to see its review for an explanation on that. In any case, I ended up buying this bracelet from a viewer. It turns out I'm a bracelet guy. I would suggest to anyone buying a watch that you get it on a bracelet if at all possible, as straps are fairly affordable and much easier to get a hold of. If you decide to buy the bracelet at a later date, then I'm afraid you'll pay a hefty premium for the privilege. Next we have my first foray into mechanical watches, the Steinhardt Ocean Vintage Military 39, or the OVM 39 for short. Steinhardt are a German-based company well known in the watch world for their homages to unobtainable watches both old and new. The OVM39 is a fantastic watch. Build quality is excellent and the ETA2824 automatic movement inside is never more than a second per day out. This is widely available in a 42mm version from the Steinhardt website. This limited edition 39mm version was sold through Norman Watches in Singapore. I was lucky enough to pick this up brand new on eBay for around £400, an absolute bargain as far as I'm concerned. It's a perfect fit on my 7 inch wrist and I don't hide the fact that it's my favourite watch and is usually my first choice out the box for a special occasion or a trip away. Some might pour scorn on the fact that it's a rip off of a Rolex Millsub 5517, a fact that I was oblivious to at the time of purchase, in any case most people don't have 50 grand to throw at a watch. I certainly don't. If you're looking for a well-built automatic watch with quality that belies its price tag, then Steinhardt is a pretty good place to start your search. One thing I have noticed in the UK is that more often than not, we pay a premium for our watches compared to other countries. This spurred me on to carry an experiment and I decided to buy this watch, the Glycine Combat Sub reference GL0087 from Mastrop in the States. Massdrop have since changed their name to Drop. If you know why that might be, feel free to drop me a line. 
In any case, I did a whole video on the costs associated with importing a watch into the UK. That covered everything from exchange rates, credit card charges, import duties and clearinghouse fees. If you're considering importing a watch into the UK, then you might want to check that video out. Consider though that the sterling dollar exchange rate has bombed since that video was published. The Combat Sub is a relatively slim dive watch. This reference is only around 12mm thick and has lovely turned down lugs helping the 42mm diameter adhere to your wrist. They come in a multitude of various colours, style and sizes. Finding one that suits you shouldn't be difficult. This version came on a fairly substantial vanilla scented rubber strap which I have stored away in a sealed plastic bag. It's the one watch in my collection that I've tried on more straps than any other. I currently have it on this canvas style affair. If anyone has a suitable bracelet that they'd like to send my way, then I will gladly accept it. Like the Steinhardt, it also houses the ETA 2824 automatic movement, and it's pretty close to the same accuracy. It has the best crown action on any watch that I've come across, a clean thread which pops out and winds beautifully. Now we come to a watch that really stands out, and not just because it's the only white dial on the table, the Seiko Saab 065, more commonly known as the Cocktail Time. It might be a strange term to use, but this is by far my prettiest watch, and the first dress watch to join my collection. I bought this new from a dealer on eBay, pretty much a year after it was discontinued by Seiko. I also used an eBay discount to buy it, and paid well under £300. I got it specifically to wear for my daughter's wedding, as I wanted something more elegant than a diver. Don't be fooled by the starburst effect on this dial. Some have called it the blue cocktail, but it is most definitely white. The blue needle secondhand and polished indices make this a stunning piece to look at and wear. It's still a little bit on the large side for a proper dress watch, coming in at a diameter of just over 40mm, and relatively thick too, helped by the domed crystal that sits on top of it. It's powered by a 6R15 movement, which you can see through the display case back. This one's running at approximately 8 seconds a day fast. I swapped out the original glossy black strap for this blue affair, which I think complements it rather well. And before you ask, the strap is from Hirsch. It's called the Blue Jumper. Well, after buying a bunch of watches in quick succession, it suddenly dawned on me how much money I was spending, so I decided to cool my jets a bit and give myself a budget of only £50 to buy my next watch. The result was this, the Timex Water Redate 40, reference TW2P75100. Now there's no prizes for guessing why I bought this watch. It is clearly a Rolex Explorer wannabe, but I shall warn you now, it is nowhere near Rolex quality. However, provided you don't take it too seriously, which I don't, then it's a watch you can enjoy wearing and not have to worry about which is just as well, because if you took this watch seriously, then it would never get on your wrist. For starters, it claims to be 40mm, even the Timex website states 40mm. That's not the case, this is a 42mm watch. It's also a quartz, therefore you get quartz accuracy, but the movement is not that great. The second hand barely hits any of the markers, and the date complication, well, that gave up the ghost months ago. It does, however, have a very nice indiglo facility, making it legible in complete darkness. I won't say that much more about the water brew, only that, if anything, it makes me want a Rolex Explorer more than ever. One thing I have learned over the last two years is not to make a decision about a watch before actually getting your hands on it. I have been both bitterly disappointed and regularly surprised when handling a watch. None proves this more so than the Citizen Signature Grand Touring Sport reference NB1031-53L. I'd seen this watch online but its hefty price tag and gargantuan proportions had put me off. It was months later that I happened to find it on sale at a local jewellery store for a fraction of its retail price. It was ex-display from another shop and I don't think they had any idea of its original price. I knew the RRP should be around £850. They had it marked as 270 with a sale price of 110 An absolute steal. I quickly tried it on before asking the sales lady to put it to one side whilst I pondered my decision over a flat white at an adjacent coffee shop. I normally spend months chewing over whether I should buy a watch. This took me 10 minutes. That was 10 minutes too long. I figured if I didn't like the watch, then I could always sell it at a later date for a profit. Now this watch is overbuilt, over-engineered, way too blingy and shiny for me, and I absolutely love it. It's a high-tier citizen and pretty close to luxury quality, and it shows. 
It even has an exclusive in-house automatic movement, the 9012. Though in my case, it could do with some regulation, as this one is running a little fast. It has sapphire crystals both front and back, but still manages 300 meter water resistance. If you look closely, there's a scratch on the bezel. I bought it this way, probably why it was on sale. I have considered replacing the bezel, but then I worry that I might baby it, which is silly really, because this watch is so solid, I think it would survive a nuclear blast. After realizing I could get away with wearing a bigger watch, I picked up this in yet another sale, the Belova Lunar Pilot Reference 96B258, the other moon watch. I managed to grab it at less than half retail, proof again that being patient pays dividends. Now bizarrely, I had this watch more than a year before doing the review, and I've only worn it a handful of times in that time. I'm not entirely sure why that is. It's a great watch, maybe I'm just not a chronograph guy. Or maybe it's because it's a special occasion timepiece. It's certainly not what I would consider a daily wear. It's the ultimate high precision quartz tool watch, but there's no way I'd risk scratching that large proud looking crystal on a daily basis. I think maybe I need to force myself to wear it or let it go. After adding two large watches to the collection, getting something smaller seemed inevitable. And as I never do things by half, I pointed my wife in the direction of the 38mm Timex Navi Harbour reference TW2 R31 800WSB. Why do Timex have such long references? In any case, I got this as a gift last Christmas. Not, I might add, on this leather strap. This is courtesy of Watch Gecko. The original strap is a NATO style in drab green, made from the same material as military parachute cord. And that sets the tone for this watch, as it is heavily influenced by military spec. It has loom dive markers, field watch 24 hour markers, and a pilot style GMT bi-directional friction bezel. It also has a unique looking handset. Don't get too excited though, this is a Timex Quartz, and that second hand doesn't quite hit all the markers, though on this reference it comes pretty damn close. The good news is that there is now a 41mm Navi Harbour with an automatic movement, so if you want a sweeping hand, that might be your preferred choice. One of the standouts on the Navi Harbour is its tumbled case. I am reliably informed that this is done in something similar to a washing machine. That may or may not be true. Getting a scratch on the Navi is something you don't have to fret about, as the case already looks like it's been through some heavy wear, oh, and it has 100m water resistance too. After the disappointment of my Tudor, I decided to do something completely different and bought my first digital watch. I had a £50 voucher to spend, which pretty much covered half the price of the Casio G-Shock reference GW-M5610-1ER. I thought it would be a perfect word beater to supplement the Citizen Promaster. It's proven to be a fantastic choice. G-Shocks have a cult following, and after picking this up, I can see why. It does everything you need a watch to do, and its rugged retro build and styling make it ideal for tough environments. The module inside is solar powered and set by atomic clock. All you have to do with this watch is throw it on the wrist. Having a G-Shock is a no-brainer, and if you want to know how popular they are, check out my review. It's had more than 100,000 views, way more than any other watch that I've shown you today. That might go somewhere to explaining why they've been around for more than 35 years and still going strong. If you're looking for an inexpensive, classically styled, no frills automatic dress watch, then it might be worth your while checking out the Star King, reference AM0184. This watch was sent to me by Star King Watches, a Chinese watch manufacturer, and before you spit venom at your screen, consider the specs list here. Stainless steel case, sapphire glass, in-house movement, display case back, stainless steel bracelet with butterfly clasp, and solid end links, all for around £40. The movement is a major letdown here. It's a bit rough around the edges, as is the crown, which could do with some refinement. Maybe a slight increase in size too. Many of you did contact me to say that it's quite easy to regulate, which would be a necessity for this movement, as it's running around 30 seconds slow per day. The good news is that Starking are now selling this watch with a Myota 8215 movement, which some might see as an improvement. My penultimate watch barely needs an introduction. It's the third Timex to join my collection, the Q Timex 1979 reissue. This is a hot ticket right now as it has sold out on every limited release. It seems to be a Marmite watch too. People either love it or hate it. Personally, I love it. Most of the haters round on the fact that it is a high price for what they perceive as a cheap quartz watch. 
I think Timex priced this extremely well, squeezing as much out of your wallet as they thought they could get away with. It should be said that Qtimex is promoted and packaged like a premium product. It is certainly a step up from their usual offerings, but still has a few unfortunate Timex quirks. You can watch my review to learn more about that. The good news is they have a Batman come in with an automatic movement. I'm sure they will have an orderly queue for that one. My last watch, see what I did there, last watch? Or should I say my most recent watch is the Seiko SRPC 91K1, better known as the Seiko Turtle Save the Ocean Special Edition. Well, I have to reserve judgment on this watch as I have yet to publish its review, which I will do in the next week or two, but I can tell you this much. It's gorgeous and an absolute keeper, and one I've been meaning to pick up for quite some time. So there we have it, Lucky 13, 13 fairly affordable watches in my collection. Unfortunately, my main watch box only has 10 slots. I do have a secondary watch box, but that spends most of its time hidden in a cupboard. That being the case, I've decided to split the collection into an A box and a B box. The A being full of my favourite daily wares, and the lesser worn watches will preside in the B. And this is how I have divvied them up. Sorry, forgetting here I have an international audience. And this is how I've divided them up. Have a quick scan and let me know if I chose wisely. Well, thanks for watching and be sure to share your thoughts or maybe even details of your collection in the comments. If available, I will add some Amazon links for today's watches in the video description below. Feel free to use them at your own discretion. Talk about timing. This has literally just arrived. I guess this makes it watch number 14. And if you want to know what's in here, then you'll have to watch my next video.